Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Mikey Demas, and today we're going to get into the very first guitar rig I had as a kid. So I was selling some guitar stuff earlier in the year and having a bit of a nostalgia fest about all the stuff, all the gear that's come into my life over the years I've been playing. I've been playing guitar for about 28 years now, so as you can imagine, there's loads of stuff that's come in and out of my life in that time. I started thinking about the very first bits of gear that I accumulated when I was a kid and thought, wouldn't it be cool to put a video together of me recreating as much of that as I can get my hands on? Being like a young teenager with next to no money to spend on anything, I was at the mercy of things being given to me. I borrowed a load of stuff initially, and when I started to show that I was really into the instrument, that's where I was lucky enough to get my own bits of gear. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so first off is uh, my very first guitar that I owned was a Mexican Fender Stratocaster. It looked almost exactly like this. This is one that I borrowed for the purposes of this video. It was Olympic white color. Um, it had that rosewood fretboard. It was made in Mexico. It was totally stock and standard when I got it. I think I just really wanted to be like Jimi Hendrix at Woodstock, Keith Richards, that scene in Hail Hail Rock and Roll where he looks like he wants to lamp Chuck Berry around the face. Obviously those two guitars had maple necks, but this was the closest thing. I really love the idea of having like a cream white strap, that kind of thing. It actually got stolen out of the back of my car when I was a kid, when I was probably about 18 years old. I'd had the guitar since I was probably about, I don't know, 11 or 12, an opportunist thief stole it along with a ton of other gear, which is all very sad. Yeah, the one I had was pretty much just like this, stock pickups. I eventually changed the bridge pickup in mine to uh, Seymour Duncan Hot Rails. It was in this tiny little shop that was in the town I grew up in. It was like the only pickup they had in there. It was kind of made for it and that was like, became my tone, like a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails. And I was like a kid and I still, still really rate those pickups. I want to say this one's got the same strings as it had on in 1994 as well. So let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so this absolute beast of an amp was everywhere in the 90s. I feel like anyone who played guitar in the 90s at some point owned one of these, played one of these. Everyone I speak to is like, PV Bandit, best amp ever. I had unlimited use of my very good friend Mark Roberts's PV Bandit. Uh, when we were in a band together, I used it all the time. I chained it together with another amp I had. Um, so although it wasn't technically mine, it was as good as mine because I would use it all the time at band practice. Being solid state, it was bomb proof, it was loud, it was gainy, it had reverb, it was a killer little combo. I've got one behind me here, it's not exactly the same one. I had the one with sort of killer 80s turquoise trim on it, which looked super, super boss. But this one is a really close match and it's got virtually the same controls. I managed to borrow this bandit via the power of Facebook and the kindness of a very wonderful chap called Tim Smith, who plays for an awesome rockabilly group called the Rhythm Slingers. Please go check them out. I'm gonna leave a link to their band down below. Go check them out, please. And thank you, Tim, for the borrowing of this amp. I don't think any teenager in the 90s, myself included, had any interest in what the clean sound of an amp was like. So let's stop messing around and let's get into the Dirty Channel. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is a really random one. This is an Arian Metal Master distortion pedal. This was something that belonged to my dad and that I borrowed, which is weird because he's not a metaler in any sense whatsoever. He'd tell you that he saw Deep Purple and Motorhead in the 70s and he lost his hearing. But other than that, he's like kind of a hippie kind of guy. He's not really a metaler. It's weird that he's got a, he had a Metal Master. Anyway, I borrowed it and made it mine. And it was a noisy little distortion box, you know? I think it was based on like the HM2 Boss Heavy Metal. Really similar layout. It's made of plastic, so it's a lot cheaper. I got this one on Reverb from Japan. It's completely mint for the most part, except for the fact that the battery door is one side snapped off, so it kind of just falls off, but that's not a big deal. It's an interesting take on the HM2 because it's got the same sort of EQ controls, it's got this soft or direct uh, button. I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think it does something to the secondary output. It's got like two outputs, which is really weird. Let's plug it in and see what it's all about. sound bad actually. Not sure what this switch does. Direct and soft. Got a really fuzzy sort of top end. It's on full gain, but it doesn't sound like it's on full gain. So I don't have the original Stratocaster, but one thing I just remembered I do have is the bridge pickup out of it. When I modded it, I took the original pickup out and put a Seymour Duncan hot rails in. I don't keep much stuff. I'm not massively sentimental. This is just something I hung on to. This is from a mid nineties Stratocaster. The pickup covers like all painted where I think I probably painted it black to try and look cool and then took it all off, changed my mind. It smells moldy and disgusting. I got this in a tiny little guitar-y hardware crossover shop in a town I grew up in. So 79 pounds on there, which is the going rate back in the 90s for a Hot Rails. And to be honest, I don't think they're much more than that now. So kind of weird. Yeah, that's the first pickup. 
That was my first guitar. I'm quite stoked to still have that. One thing I definitely didn't have access to back then was decent cable. I remember buying a few bright neon orange guitar cables in Maplin, which I thought were the coolest thing at the time. Still think they're pretty cool, actually. Kind of gutted I don't have them anymore, frankly. No teenage rig is complete without those multicolor patch cables that have like three strands of copper inside them and break the second you put them into a pedal. This little meaty patch cable is one I made out of some Van Damme tall grade instrument cable and some Neutrik connectors. That's the kind of thing I use these days. And the other beast I use now is this custom cable made for me by Mike Vegas from Nice Rack Canada. Anyway, it's my favorite cable, if you can believe I have such a thing. I use it every time I record. It's got a really nice switchcraft jack on one end and it's got a cool Neutrik one on the other end. So thanks very much for that, Mike. Love it. First electric guitar I ever had was uh, my dad's Antoria Les Paul copy. It was this lawsuit era Gibson Les Paul copy that weighed a ton. The pickups were awful, they were really microphonic, but it had loads of vibe and it was like, you know, the fretless wonder, super low action, really easy to play. I totally cut my teeth on that guitar and I borrowed it for ages, gutted that it got stolen as well out of the back of my car. My dad was gutted, I was gutted. I felt awful about it. I later replaced that guitar when I was on tour with Skindred. I found a really nice Fender Strat that I bought for him as a sorry to make up for it. And I think he gave me. I also had this really weird sort of 60s Italian copy. I don't know what make it was. It was kind of like reminiscent of an Echo. It had that horrible kind of like 60s sunburst vibe, white scratch plate, really bizarre tremolo system. It was kind of like an SG shape. It had like single coil pickups, I guess kind of like a melody maker, but with this big, horrible, ugly, like, weird headstock, a bridge that didn't work, a tremolo that didn't work. Action was god awful, it sounded god awful. It was a terrible guitar. I butchered it, took it to pieces, did loads of weird stuff to it. I don't know what happened to that. I, it probably ended up down the tip because it was completely unplayable. After all my stuff got stolen, I think I borrowed a friend's Ibanez RG that was like right-handed. I strung it upside down. I played that for ages. That was the first like Floyd Rose guitar I ever put my hands on and it was really hard to string up and slowly over time, the bridge went up and up and up and I didn't know what I was doing with it. Then I replaced that with uh, a Gibson SG Special, which I still have to this day. And that's the guitar I joined Skindred with. Love that guitar. That one's been around the world 10 dozen times. And I'll never get rid of that one. That one's under lock and key. Most of this other stuff on this list has either gone, I've got stolen or lost or I sold it. I don't have anything from, you know, from, from back then other than that SG. Okay, when I thought about making this video, I was trying to remember what the first amp I had was. It was one of my dad's. It was like a little combo that he'd had. I guess it was like from the 70s or 80s. And I could not remember what the make of it was. I could have sworn that it was made by Tannoy, like randomly, because I knew it began with a T, because the low had a T. And I was searching the depths of my mind to remember what this thing was. And then the other day it came to me, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, it's a talk. It was a talk bass or guitar combo. Could have been a keyboard combo. Had a couple of controls, bass, middle, treble, post gain and pre gain. And actually had a pretty cool sort of like pre gain thing where you turn that up and it was like kind of shreddy. I have no idea what happened to that amp, but I replaced it with, I want to say it was a Fender Performer 1000. I could have sworn that I had a Fender Rock Pro, but all the pictures of Rock Pro that I find had like a silver front, and a black grill cloth. My amp did not have that at all. It had a black face like panel and it had silver cloth. And I searched high and low looking for a Fender Rock Pro that had this thing. But I think it was a Fender Performer. It is exactly the same amp as far as I can tell. So it could be that they rebranded it to a Rock Pro. It was like a one by 12 combo. That was a hybrid amp that had like some tube technology in it, had a clean channel and like two dirty channels. Yeah, I love that thing. And I think I chained that together with Mark's PV Bandit. And that was my guitar rig. Those two amps together. It was super loud, sounded terrible, but had a lot of fun using it. I think I must have sold that Fender amp because I don't have it anymore. I don't know where it is. I, I think I sold it to a friend possibly a long, long time ago. I think in the interim, I borrowed a friend's guitar head of a guy I was in a band with, like a solid state. Carlsbra 150 
GTX, solid state, super high gain. And then again, that was stolen out of the back of my car. I wasn't robbed multiple times. This was all one time, like had all this stuff stolen once. It wasn't like they kept hitting me up. So once all that stuff had been stolen, I knew I had to replace things. So I went and got a Gibson SG special from Denmark Street, one of the shops on Tim Pan Alley. And the guy totally ripped me off sold me you know a cheap gibson they saw me come in i didn't know what i was doing it said gibson so i thought it was valuable but it was just a cheaper model and i think i paid like a thousand pounds for a gibson sg special back then but yeah i think he totally ripped me off but i know better now i also bought a marshall jcm 900 half stack off someone i was working with at the time it was like the pre-slx model i want to say it was like the 2100 so it was kind of like master volume but it had two volume controls in it because it did one thing well which was like the high gain thing that's how i learned to control the gain of what the guitar was doing with the volume control like usually on the neck pickup so where i grew up there was a local youth venue called the sweat box uh, which was run or coordinated by a youth worker called gary kingett who turned out to be a very pivotal person in my journey of getting to be a guitar player. The Sweatbox was the first gig I ever played. And I think I must have seen a band there from out of town, like a relatively well-known band. And the lead guitar player had a pedal board and it was the first time I'd ever seen a pedal board. And that was the moment where I was like, right, that is me from now on. Gear versus talent ratio slipping the wrong way. I just need a pedal board. I need lots of little things to step on and I'm going to do it. That's the future of guitaring. So I bought like a flight case from a guy in town and I lined it in leopard print fur that I've got at Fabricland or somewhere and kind of bolted pedals into it. And I sort of started to accumulate pedals. I had a Boss Flanger. I had a C5 Chorus Ensemble. I had a DD3. I think I had a Snarling Dogs Wah. I had a color sound tone bender fuzz that I bought from a trade show. I had a Marshall governor. I had all these pedals plumbed into this neat little case. And that was me, I was set. I didn't really know what I was doing with any of them, but I just like plugging things in in random orders and getting tones up. Slowly over time, I sold everything. I didn't hang on to any of it, sadly. It was just a case of like never having any money. I've got this, I might as well sell it. It's just the way it goes with gear sometimes. And I now don't own any of the things that I've mentioned uh, with the exception of the Gibson SG that I joined Skindred with. Everything else was either lost, stolen, sold, all gone. So yeah, when I joined Skindred, I had uh, that Gibson SG special. I had the Marshall JCM 900 stack, half stack and no pedals. I didn't even have a tuner pedal. It was very much like a baptism of fire where I needed to get a few things to be able to play some of the tunes and I needed to get a tuner and all that stuff. So I got a whammy pedal. I remember I got the Line 6 FM4, the purple stomp box modeler. And that thing just opened up a world for me of like weirdness on the guitar, which I've sort of continued to go down that path. Never really stepped off that path of loving boxes that make weird noises for guitar. So trying to wrap this up, I know that I've talked a lot about gear more than playing it probably. I guess the important thing to me is to know that stuff comes and goes, things come into your life, they go out. It's about how you use them, how they make you feel and whether or not you hang on to them because you have something attached to that thing. It's okay to hang on to certain things, stuff that has the most sentimentality wrapped up in it. That doesn't necessarily have to be something expensive or of high quality. Sometimes the, like, the cheapest, most inexpensive stuff that falls to pieces has the most sentiment wrapped up in it because of the way it made you feel or how important it was on your journey. I would love to have my first guitar still in my arsenal just to have it hanging on the wall as like a memory. But at the same time, I learned a really valuable lesson when I had so much stuff stolen back then. And, you know, I wouldn't necessarily change that. I think another takeaway from looking back at all this stuff is it was about what you could get your hands on and making do with the things that were available to you. If you like this video, please like, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.